that wall. Now, the obstructionist Democrats would like us not to do it, but believe me, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall. Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. That was President Trump speaking to thousands of supporters at a rally in Phoenix earlier this week. I asked Oregon Senator Ron Wyden how the president's determination to build a wall will play with Congress when it reconvenes next month. We also talked about what's at stake with the effort to reverse net neutrality. Here's more of my conversation with Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, welcome back to Straight Thank Talk. Thank you. I want to backtrack just a little bit to health care. Washington Senator Patty Murray and Republican Chair of the Health Committee, Senator Lamar Alexander, planning hearings on health care. They've set dates already for September 6th and 7th. How encouraged are you that, that perhaps the Senate can come up with a bipartisan plan to stabilize the insurance markets? That, that committee and the Finance Committee on which I serve both have hearings set for that first week that we uh, come back. And clearly, the last few months, the Trump administration has poured gasoline on the fires of uncertainty in the private insurance marketplace. In other words, those private plans, which we have many in our state, they need to have some sense, for example, about whether the assistance is going to be there for the low-income people who need help with their deductibles and, and co-payments. So, both committees are going to have to work together. We're going to have to find a path that is bipartisan. But the reality is the Republicans have three branches of government, and the president has been making these payments already. So it is clear that they are going to have to step up and do what they were unwilling to do earlier this year. Also, there's going to be interest in uh, another part of the Affordable Care Act that I authored, and I've spoken with Chairman Alexander about that, this, and this is the provision that would allow states to go off and set up their own approaches. Many Oregonians, for example, would like to use it for a public option or a single-payer approach, and Lamar Alexander has talked to me about various ways in which that could be uh, pursued so that there could be state innovation. I've said I'm happy to do it, but only if the states want to do better, not do worse. You've talked a lot about and heard from Oregonians on the efforts to reverse net neutrality and the importance of protecting a free and open internet. The public comment period ends the middle of next week. Help us understand what's at stake here. Well, what's at stake is whether your viewers are gonna be able to use the internet the way they use it today. Net neutrality essentially means that if one of your viewers has paid their internet access fee, they get to go where they want, when they want, how they want. The internet is open to any and all, and the fact is, this has been the best platform for free and open expression, as far as I can tell, in the history of the human race. And I don't see why uh, the special interests, particularly the cable companies, should be allowed to inflict their agenda, which is things like paid priority lanes for the people who are affluent. It's almost like they, they want an information aristocracy, and I don't know why they should be able to inflict that on the rest of us. Now, recently, they've known that support is very significant for net neutrality, so they've said, well, let's have voluntary net neutrality. And when I was asked earlier about that, I said, look, uh, watching the cable companies pursue voluntary net neutrality is like William Peter Wyden, age nine, voluntarily agreeing to limit himself to one dessert. It's just not going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? The, the public comment period ends next week? They what may, do you think the FCC they will do? may, Mr. Pai may have the votes to steer it through the Federal Communications Commission, but then it will come right back to the House and the Senate. And I believe that we have generated a, a real grassroots juggernaut for not turning back the clock on uh, the way the internet is open to, uh, to all and uh, the structure stays as it is. I introduced actually the first uh, net neutrality bill back in 2006, so I will be spending a lot of time this fall trying to preserve 
an internet that is free and open to all Oregonians. So we'll look for a battle there. I want to touch on immigration. When the president was in Phoenix at the rally there, there were a lot of supporters holding build the wall signs, something that the president promised from the very beginning when he was campaigning. The budget comes up when you go back to Congress. How much do you think the administration is going to dig in their heels on that, and how is that going to affect the budget discussions? The, the president has pursued this since the campaign, and what I'm struck by is the leaders in the Senate in particular are just not willing to say that this is a budget priority. And I'll say it, you know, up straight to Oregonians. I have supported putting billions of dollars into tightening up security at the border. But on this wall issue, I'd rather spend that money improving Oregon roads and bridges and educational kind of services than building a wall. Do you think there's any danger as you head towards trying to come up with a budget by the end of September and also raise the debt ceiling of a government shutdown? I certainly, I certainly hope not. I mean, we have two issues. The first is the debt ceiling question, whether the government is going to honor its bills. Mitch McConnell said yesterday that uh, the debt ceiling issue would be resolved, and uh, uh, I hope that's uh, the case. It also goes to the Senate, uh, Senate Finance uh, Committee, but in the House of Representatives, there are some of those members who'd like to use it to, in effect, attach some ideological trophies to it, and that could complicate it. We have a wildfire situation going on throughout the state of Oregon. We've got the Millie Fire, we've got the Chetco Bar Fire, the Warm Springs Fire. What can you tell us about the situation statewide and your thoughts about it? We have just about two minutes over, left. Over August, I've spent a lot of time getting out to the interagency fire, fire operations. And of course, it's hot and dry. Um, we had a lot of moisture this year. That generated a lot of grass. And we've got huge uh, fuel buildup on the forest floor. That's what the forest experts uh, you know, have told me. So. You know, a couple things. First, we've got to make sure that our firefighters have the tools they need. That's what I focused on on the Resources Committee. And then we've got to fix this broken system of fighting fire in effect right, right now. Uh, the system shortchanges prevention. Then you have a big fire. They borrow from the prevention fund, and the problem gets worse. Senator Mike Crapo and I have had more than 200 groups, foresters, uh, environmental folks, uh, industry people, behind a bill that would fix the broken system of fire borrowing. So let's get our professionals the tools they need here to get through this August uh, critical uh, time. Then let's fix the broken system. Is that Chetco Bar Fire, I think, is the number one priority in the nation right it, now. It, it, it is, and it, it's not surprising because of the kind of winter we've had. You, you've seen prevention get short shrift. Then we've had a lot of grass because of the moisture um, th this year. So you bet. I mean, we like being first in a lot in a lot of things, vote by mail or protecting the beaches. We don't like being first in terms of uh, the biggest biggest fire. So I'm going to use my position on the Resources Committee to make sure that we get the, the forest fire, uh, the Forest Service people, the help that they need now. Then we fix the broken system. We have under 30 seconds left, but anything else you'd like to leave with viewers today? It's going to be a busy busy fall, and a lot of it's going to go to the Finance Committee. And I know it seems that. Much of Washington, D.C. just spends its time hollering at each other. What I've heard at my town hall meetings, we've got serious problems. I'll be focused on serious solutions. Senator Wyden, thank you for joining us thank here on you. Story Talk. Always a pleasure. Good luck back in D.C. We'll do it again. We always welcome your comments. You can send them to us on Twitter. Follow us at KGW Straight Talk. Thank you once again to my guest, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk.